Welcome back to Tech S City. This is Doc Easy coming back to you guys today with a comparison comparing a sound card. This is the Titanium HD versus the onboard audio. It's a Realtek 1150 versus an external USB external audio interface, the M Audio Fast Track. Now, there's recently been some good articles that have come out. Uh, Tom's did a blind test article where they essentially volume matched all their sources and they found that people couldn't tell a difference for listening to music between a cheap onboard audio solution versus even like a $2,000 DAC amp solution. So I found that was pretty surprising. Uh, in defense of the audio files, I'd like to see more testing done and I'd like to see Tom's to uh, maybe allow the audio files to bring in their best and then that would make for a really interesting read. But I'll put that article in the description below for you guys. You can check it out for yourself. Uh, also, T Tech Syndicate, Logan from Tech Syndicate, uh, with his friend, I believe, called Tyler, they made a video uh, called Audiophile Myths. And I thought overall the message of this video was really good in that be careful of all the snake oil that is and the bullshit that exists in the audiophile industry. I mean, believe me, there's a ton of it out there. But I did disagree with him on some points and I will elaborate on that today. Uh, in particular, the sound cards being useless. I thought I did disagree uh, with that. But anyway, let's talk about music listening first because this is where... Uh, if you're listening on easy to drive headphones, there's not much of a difference. Okay, so this is the first comparison we're going to do. We're going to be comparing the sound card versus the M audio versus the onboard for music, and more particular, listening from headphones. Now, when I hooked up my HD 595s in stereo uh, to my sound card, and my, and my um, onboard audio, my fast track, there was virtually no difference at all. I couldn't tell a difference. If there was one, I couldn't really tell. Uh, this is at normal listening levels. However, when I did hook up my Fidelio X1s, I did notice that there was a slight bit of bass roll off. As these are real bass heavy headphones, I could notice it. And same with my JTS 535s, they're actually seismic headphones. Uh, so I could notice that bass roll off, it was there. So if you guys are on easy to drive headphones or moderately easy to drive headphones, then there's not much of a difference to be had at all if you're listening in stereo. Now one cool feature that the sound card did have over the other two is that it up mixes to 5.1 and I thought that this actually sounded pretty fun in a lot of the music I was listening to. Uh, some people say this might color the music but hey, uh, beauty's in the ear of the beholder in this case and I actually enjoyed the 5.1 up mix for even just for music listening. Of course I had CMSS 3D turned off. Uh, however, one thing that the M Audio Fast Track and the sound card did do is that they had much higher output, uh, so they could power harder to drive headphones with more ease as opposed to the onboard. So that's the, that, I think that's the biggest difference to be had if you're on headphones. Now, for music listening, another huge difference is if you have analog speakers. Uh, when I hooked up my Logitech Z4s to the sound card, the signal was so clean and powerful the bass was just coming out it was just you could feel it shake in my room it was that good when i hooked it up to the onboard audio it just lacked that punch it lacked that drive uh, the onboard audio i thought wasn't sufficient for powering uh, decent 2.1 or 5.1 speakers for that matter uh, the m audio did do a pretty good job but i just thought the sound card just did a phenomenal job of powering speakers so if you're on analog speakers that's something you may wish to purchase a sound card. However, overall, for easy to drive headphones, onboard audio was really good value for money and there wasn't much of a difference to be had. Let's move on now to gaming. Okay, gaming, let's move on now to gaming. And this is a really interesting topic because this, in my opinion, is where this sound card, the Titanium HD, uh, came to life and it beat uh, the M Audio Fast Track and the Onboard Audio by a big shot. Now, uh, Tech Syndicate, they came out and said that sound cards were useless, but they were using a 2005, I think. It looked like a pretty dated sound card. So uh, I would like to see them maybe go out and buy something like a Titanium HD and do some testing because I think they will be surprised. I thought this sound card was damn impressive. So essentially, this sound card had a feature called 
um, CMSS 3D. It also allowed the audio to be up mixed to virtual 5.1 surround. Now, if you guys want to hear a demo, I've got a link in the description below that uh, tests the stereo versus the CMSS 3D. So you guys can hear it for yourself. Make sure that your speakers or your headphones are in stereo mode though, if you're listening to this. Uh, so when I did this, I was surprised. The positional audio of this sound card was phenomenal to say the least. I thought it just did such a good job. I could position where people were so accurately. And if you've got a pair of HD 595s, you'll know how good these headphones are in terms of sound stage. So I thought the sound card won hands down if for gaming. Uh, the onboard audio did a good job. I thought it did a much better job than the M Audio Fast Track. And you're probably like, why is that? They both got stereo. Uh, I thought this had a bit of delay. I mean, when I was playing, uh, for instance, I was playing Call of Duty Ghost quickly. I mean, I, I could hear someone's footsteps and all of a sudden I've got knifed. So I was like, what the hell's going on? So maybe I hear some gunfire and then I'm, I'm actually dead and then I hear a little bit of gunfire. It's like, okay, this thing actually did introduce a little bit of de delay and it was pretty noticeable. So for gaming, I'd either stick to a sound card or or onboard audio. If you've got the money, I'd recommend a sound card because the positional audio, again, I've got to, I've got to emphasize this, it was phenomenal. Uh, I think I think Logan's friend said that it was just color, it was useless, um, but i got to disagree. I mean, try it for yourselves if you don't believe me because I thought this thing made a legit difference. Whatever, if, they're, if they are coloring the sound, then they're doing a damn good job and they're doing it in the right direction. So uh, the win for gaming definitely goes to the Sound Blast, the Titanium HD. So um, let's move on now to the conclusion. Okay, so in conclusion, I will say that sound cards are not by any means useless. I thought, especially something like this, the Titanium HD did a phenomenal job of positioning. It was so accurate. I, man, my, uh, man, my headphones almost fell off my head when I, you know, was shocked. I was shocked at how good this thing was. Uh, let's talk about though for music listening because it is important. Uh, listening in stereo, honestly, there was not much of a difference at all. There's a little bit of bass roll off, but is it worth $150? Hell no. Uh, as you guys didn't know, I'm more of a mid. Um, I love mids, so I'm more of a mid-orientated person in that my HD 595s are awesome headphones. They're my favorite headphones. Uh, so for me, if I was just listening to music in stereo, I would not need a sound card. But since I, I game a lot and I like to game competitively, or at least try to game competitively, something like this really did impress me. And the virtual up mix to 5.1 was really damn good. Not to mention for music listening as well, I thought with CMSS 3D turned off, it was actually offered a fun sort of feature for listening to music. So a sound card by all means is not useless. So if you guys think so, then maybe uh, I implore you to try one for yourselves and then make up your own mind. Of course, if you are listening to uh, audio on a junk pair of headphones, then you're not gonna notice a difference at all. But if you're listening on something like HD 595s, then I think you will notice a difference as I did. So uh, basically, you know, in a nutshell, I want to try things for myself and I think that the sound card is not useless. The M Audio, I thought this thing was useless for gaming, especially compared to the onboard audio. Uh, it introduced delay and latency which was noticeable, so I can't recommend this for gaming. It is good for a musician and obviously a musician is going to know who they are, so uh, that was a, it's kind of really I'm going to bump this out of the comparison. So another good thing that the sound card did was that it powered analog speakers really well. It gave them just such a strong, clean signal. And so if you love listening to music or sound from analog speakers, then you may wish to get a sound card as well. Uh, so anyway, to sum it all up, sound cards are pretty damn cool. I did really like this. I have tried the Creative Z and I sold it. I didn't really like the Creative Z, but I thought the Titanium HD um, you know, I think it's a keeper. It's a really good sound card. Anyway, uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments about this comparison, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, but yeah, in a nutshell, um, beauty is in the ear of the beholder, baby. So, uh, if you guys want to listen to things, then get them and then be your own judge. That's all I can tell you with audio. It's very subjective. 
But anyway, I found that the sound card was not useless, baby. Anyway, peace out for now. Bye.